When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week, and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC and your daily reminder that the Reds are top of the league. A nice, calm 2-1 win over Chelsea at the weekend. Obviously wasn't here yesterday, wasn't feeling very well, but I'm back today. So quickly on the Chelsea game, I've rewatched it, rewatched it yesterday, and was actually more impressed with what I watched yesterday than I was watching it live. Not just the work rate, which was very, very good, but the defensive security we showed in the game. And the awareness we showed them. Now, there were some little small breakdowns, some rotational blips. Their goal, obviously, is, is the primary example. When Caicedo picks the ball up in the middle of the pitch to play that pass for Jackson, there's at least three players whose positioning I don't love, and I don't think Arna Slot will like either. There's a lack of communication. Sabozlai was initially on Caicedo. He then loses track of Caicedo. Seems to position himself for a ball that might be played back to the centre-back so he can go and press. Ignores Caicedo. Cody Gakpo then becomes the next man in position. He should step in on Caicedo. Doesn't, I assume, because he's trying to block a passing lane to Cole Palmer. But if he's doing that, then Curtis Jones should be the one to step in, and neither of them do. Both of them are hyper-focused on uh, Cole Palmer. Andy Robertson is also playing far too narrow, and because he's so narrow, he's actually lined up on Cole Palmer. Medeki is way out wide. But it feels like if Cody or Curtis press to Caicedo before the ball gets to him, one of the others could very easily have stepped and taken Cole Palmer. And Mudeki wasn't in a position where he was really going to cause any problems and we could have cheated Van Dijk across. There's also, it, it didn't come to anything because Caicedo took the ball and played it himself. But as that ball is played in, Gravenberg is the wrong side of Lavia. And if Caicedo pings it first time into Lavia's feet, he's moving away from Gravenberg, who's wrong side of him, and he could have played the pass. So like, it's minor things. The bigger issue is obviously Ibu not being in the defensive line, being a little bit deeper. That's something he just needs to be more focused on. And Virgil turns the wrong way. Virgil's body position is wrong. So a number of players do small things wrong. And it costs us. But ultimately, you do have to give credit where it's due. It's a really good bit of play by Caicedo. It's a really good finish by Nicholas Jackson. And then you have to give our players a lot of credit because for the second time, they went ahead in the Premier League game, got pegged back, and then immediately went and scored again. And that shows huge character. That's the perfect response. Because how often have you seen a game, and if any of you watched the Tottenham-West Ham game over the weekend, you'll have seen Tottenham score and then West Ham's defence just crumble. 
and fall apart for about six, seven minutes and could easily have conceded four goals in that run. Ours reacted really well. Our team got back on track really quickly, really smartly, and it's a really good goal by Curtis, obviously the setup by Mo. And Mo just continues to do amazing things. Like absolutely amazing things. The numbers are just mind blowing. Give the man the contract that he wants, that he deserves. And I, I don't care if you have feel like you're overpaying. This guy has been a bargain the entire time he's been at the club. He's the highest paid player at the club now. He deserves more. He deserves more. Him and Virgil are the two pillars of this run over the last seven or so years. Those two stand above everybody. As great as Allison is, I think we could have gotten away with a slightly worse goalkeeper and still been successful. Having the best keeper in the world has obviously been incredible. But if he'd been the fourth or fifth, fifth, fourth or fifth best keeper, I still think we have great success. I think Virgil and Mo are the two that are largely irreplaceable. And you're seeing it game in, game out with the performances they're putting in and the production that we're getting. They're so vital and they have to be given their contracts. So, top of the league, seven wins. That Forest defeat gets more and more annoying. However, it does, in a way, get a little bit less frustrating because when you look at the start Forest have had, they go out last night, they beat Crystal Palace 1-0 at home. It's a good result for them. Forrest are eighth. They've only lost once. Three wins, four draws. They've got the second best goal, uh, second best defensive record in the league with only six goals conceded. And, you know, only conceding six and eight for Forrest is, is hugely impressive. It's not as impressive as us only conceding three and eight compared to the greatest centre-back pairing of all time at Arsenal, they've conceded eight goals already. City have conceded nine. So, you know, I look forward to the Jamie Carragher article in whatever newspaper it is that he happens to be shilling for, where he writes up about the brilliance of Ibu and Virgil, because he was very quick to do it at the start of the season, about Saliba and Gabriel. Where's the flowers for our two? Where's the flowers for them? They're on a historic track right now. Saliba and Gabriel, there's been lots of pairings better than them. There's been lots of teams that have had better defensive runs than Arsenal had last year. There's been very few that have ever come close to what ours are doing right now. So let's see the love for them. Let's see the articles. Let's see the Monday Night Football segments. Let's see the respect given to the best centre-back the Premier League has ever seen. And I believe the second best centre-back in the league, in Ibu Kanate. And they do it with two attack-minded full-backs and basically a rotating goalkeeper because Allison misses games. Yet Ibu and Virgil turn up each each week and just put in unbelievable performances game after game. Tomorrow night, we take on Leipzig. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the last time we played them was the 2021 Champions League. We met them in the round of 16. Both games were played in Budapest. And we won both games by two goals to nil, a 4 nil aggregate win. Salah and Mane both scoring in both games. The club website has 14 interesting facts and figures about Liverpool's Champions League fixture at RB Leipzig on Wednesday evening. So, Liverpool are unbeaten in their last 12 meetings with German opposition in all European competition, nine wins and three draws. Uh, The second one is that yet the only other time we have played them in the Champions League was that 2021 uh, campaign. 
Liverpool have won 14 of the last 19 Champions League matches. That includes nine of the last 11. If Arna Slot's side win this game, they will become the first team in club's history to win each of their six, each of their first six away fixtures of a season. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the Reds could record an eighth consecutive victory in all competitions for the first time since March of 2022. That was part of a run of 12 consecutive wins across all competitions. Uh, success at the Red Bull Arena would also see Liverpool win 11 of their first 12 games of a campaign for the first time in history. That seems pretty impressive. Mohamed Salah could make his 69th European Cup appearance for Liverpool, which would move him into third place in the club's all-time appearance list in the competition, behind Jamie Carragher, who played 91 times in the competition, and Steven Gerrard, who made 87 appearances. Uh, The Egyptian needs two goals to reach 50 for the Reds in European competition, which is absolutely phenomenal considering he's at less than 70 appearances in the Champions League. Obviously, he did play Europa League last year, but it's a ridiculous record. Um, before both joined Liverpool, Ibrahim Kanate made 95 appearances for RB Leipzig, and Dominic Sabozlai made 91. Ibu Kanate is a yellow card away from a one-match ban in the competition. I do wonder then if they might hold him out and maybe play Kwanzaa. We'll see. Or Joe Gomez, obviously. Um, Unbeaten Leipzig have 17 points after seven Bundesliga games. That's a new club record. They've only conceded twice in the league, keeping six clean sheets. So taking a similar approach to us, it would appear, in how they're going about their business. There are only two defeats this season of both come in Europe. They've not made a good start in the Champions League. Um, They have lost away to Atletico Madrid and at home to Juventus in what was a very, very strange game. If you haven't seen that one, it's well worth going and watching it. Um, How Juve pulled out that win, I don't know. But They've only conceded five goals in their two... Well, they've only conceded five goals. They, they've lost twice. They've only conceded five goals. They're minus two on their goal difference. We should be going there looking to win. We really should be going there looking to win. Uh, they, Girona, Sturmgratz, Milan, Red Star Belgrade, Red Bull Salzburg, Slovan Bratislava, and Young Boys of Bern are the teams that have taken no points thus far. Leipzig goalkeeper Peter Galaxi spent five years at Anfield, and although he did not make a senior appearance, he was on the bench 51 times. Uh, not quite Tony Warner, but was, you know, getting there. Uh, Red Bull have lost only one of their last 10 matches at home in all competitions, keeping seven clean sheets. That was that home defeat to Juventus. Uh, as a good piece up on This Is Anfield, Curtis Jones, who obviously was huge in that game for us at the weekend, uh, talking about what Arna Slot looks for in a midfielder. Do check that one out. We also have good news that Cornell Nishur has signed his first professional contract with the Reds just over a year after signing from Hull. He joined in the summer of 2023. Now that he's turned 17, he is eligible for his pro contract and we've wasted, wait, wasted even, wasted no time at all. This kid is... We've had a lot of very promising young goalkeepers come through our academy in recent years from Kelleher and Grabara, Harvey Davies, um... Pitaluga, Yaros, you know, there's been a bunch of them. People who watch the Academy think this kid is the best of them and it's not close at this age. At this age. Now, the next few years are obviously going to be key development ages. 
at 17, I, I don't think there's any view that Cuevin Keller was going to stay at the club for as long as he has. But he developed really well from kind of 17 to 20. So we'll see what happens with Mishur over the next couple of years. Like I'm probably pronouncing his name completely wrong. Um, born in Scarborough to Polish parents. Joined Hull in 2016 and then joined the Mighty Reds last summer. Uh, what else do we have on this is Anfield? Diogo Jota misses training. Not surprising, frankly, considering he was taken off with an injury at the weekend. It looks like a rib injury. Hopefully it's nothing that's going to keep him out for any prolonged period of time, but I think it was always expected that he would miss. From the minute he went off, I think it was expected that he would miss um, miss this game. Who else is missing from training? So Federico Chiesa, missing training. Uh, Alison Becker, obviously. Harvey Elliott, obviously. And Connor Bradley. I believe the Bradley thing is just something minor. So hopefully that's not going to keep him out for too long. Chiesa, I would imagine a lot of it with him is just the club wanting to be really careful with him and not take any any risks. Uh, in bad news, Manchtony Taylor, Trev's friend, will be the referee for our game against Arsenal on Sunday. Uh, Michael Salisbury will be on VAR. Cybersecurity Awareness Month is in full swing, and LifeLock is here to spotlight the threat of phishing, those sneaky scams designed to trick you into revealing your personal information. While staying alert is important, true protection goes beyond just awareness. That's where LifeLock steps in with comprehensive protection. LifeLock doesn't just warn you about suspicious activity. LifeLock monitors your personal info and resolves identity theft issues if they arise. Take control of your security. Start your 30-day free trial at LifeLock.com. Use promo code NEWS. Terms apply. What else do we have here? So you've probably heard Liverpool are being linked with uh, Joshua Chempong, the young right-back slash centre-back at Chelsea, who is a massive, massive talent. And seemingly, Chelsea have decided that the best way to treat this huge young talent is to freeze him out completely from both first team and development team and have him training with the under 18s until he agrees to sign a new contract. I mean, this is not this is not speaking well to the other young players at your club. This is a strong arm tactic. And this is going to lead to more and more players just walking out the door like Rio did in the summer to join us. Uh, well done, Chelsea, though. Keep being yourselves. Good stuff. Um, Arsenal had pretended like they were going to appeal William Saliba's red card and, and thus suspension for the weekend's game. Um, they were never, ever going to win that appeal. It was a very obvious red card and therefore he deserves to be suspended for a game. So, yeah, they can cry all they want, but ultimately he was always going to miss the game. Uh, there's a piece on this is Anfield about Liverpool's defence. Give that one a read. There's also a piece on Darwin and his performance at the weekend. I, I, I can't remember who it was put up the screen grab of his average position his first five minutes on the pitch, and it was just centre-back. Like, he was <laughs> playing alongside Virgil with Ibu slightly ahead of him. Fair play. He, he worked his ass off. Absolutely worked his ass off. Um, What else have we here? David James being the pantomime villain. Um, Yeah. Yeah. In no way am I surprised that David James took that approach. Good for him, though. Uh, Arla Slaw and Eric Morasca, or Eric Morasca, Enzo Morasca disagree on refereeing decisions this weekend. Look, 
we were denied two penalties in that game. There's the one, the obvious one, which was given and then overturned. That's a clear penalty. It's just baffling that anyone can can look at it and say that that's not a penalty. Um, there's also the Mo one, which when you see it from the back side, like from from the side and the front, it does look a little bit like Mo played for it. When you see it from the back, and there's a clip going around on social media, Corwell rounds his forearm into Mo's lower back. It's a blatant penalty. A blatant penalty. And Gary Neville was on Sky Sports at the time clamoring for Mo to be booked. And I still haven't seen him retract that statement because, you know, Gary Neville is professionally wrong about basically everything. Absolute clown cars. So we're denied two penalties, right? I would back Mo to score both of them. That puts us 4-1 up. They're claiming they were denied one. The Sancho Trent incident. And we've seen them given. You know, we have. We've seen them given. But at the same time, by the time Trent makes any contact with Sancho, Sancho has lost the ball and Gravenberg, I think it's Gravenberg, is about to take it off him. So I have a tough time with that one. If it had been given, you know what? I wouldn't have had too many complaints as long as we'd gotten the other two we deserved. So congrats, Chelsea. You should have lost 4-2 if the referees had given all the penalties they could have given. Would you prefer to go home with a 4-2 defeat than a 2-1 defeat? Maybe you would. It's a weird club. Uh, On to Anfield and... I worked for this site for 11 years, and I still can't say it properly. Anfieldindex.com. Uh, there's a piece about the injuries. There is a preview about the Leipzig game. There is a piece about Virgil's contract and Paul Joyce saying that there's no breakthrough thus far. Now, ultimately, Paul Joyce will only know when it's done. The club... The club will let him know when it's done. It, things have gone very quiet. The club aren't letting anything out. Um, there's another preview there ahead of the Leipzig game. And then we have a piece about Emil, Hif- Emil, Emil Heskey, Hiskey? Emil Heskey, who spoke exclusively to Anfield Index and shared his delight with the, about the Reds' win on the weekend. Uh, ben Poscott has that one. Podcast-wise, then, there is the New Media Matters with Dave Davis and Dave Lynch. And yesterday, Guy sat in for me. So if you haven't heard that one, give that a listen. And if you haven't heard Raw from the weekend, it was myself, uh, Harry Setti, stepping in for Trev and Carl Matchett, um, who was the, the late substitute to step in for Harry as Harry had to move into the host chair. Um, we had a good chat. We had a good chat. So give that one a listen. There is plenty to come this week. Things are back to normal operations. Uh, so do stick with us for the week ahead. And I will see you all tomorrow. So take care of yourselves. And as Trev Denny would say, be kind to your fellow Reds out there. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.
This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.